Hey everybody. We are going to mix up some claycrete. So I want to show everybody how to do this so you know how to do it correctly and kind of what it's just what it's supposed to look like because you have this strange bag of substance and you have a board and what do you do with them? So the board we're going to put aside for now. We're just going to play around with the claycrete. Now you have to make sure before you mix this stuff up you have your plan and you're kind of ready to go. So I'm going to show you how to mix it up but I also need a few other things around. I probably need a plastic bag um, that you can work on top of. Uh, just a Hannaford bag, you know, market basket, wherever you go. You have a little plastic bag to work on. Garbage bag is good because you can even cut it and spread it out over your table. You're going to need to um, find a nice place to work. Find a place that's going to work for you and your family. You're going to get a little dust kicked up. Um, so if they, you know, if you can work in your basement or if you can work in a garage, that's, or even outside, if it's a nice day, uh, that will work. Cause you'll see, as I pour a little bit in, there will be a little bit of dust. Okay. You can reduce the dust by being really slow about it, being really gentle. And I'm just going to put, I don't know, a third of what's in here. I really tried to cram it in and I'd make sure that I seal this back up just so the dust doesn't go anywhere. So you need uh, a bowl of some sort. You can do it in something small. So I have a like big ricotta container right here um, because I have them right here. I have them in both, um, but you could just do it in one of these big yogurt cups or ricotta or something, some sort of thing like that. Um, and you want to just put your claycrete in the bowl first, okay? And then you're going to add water and you need to add just a little bit at a time. Now I filled this up and I don't know why I did that, but you're going to, you're going to just add a little bit of time and mix it around. And obviously that's really dusty still, but I'm going to try to squeeze it together. Add just a little bit more. If you had like a water spray bottle, you could do it that way and just missed it and we want to just press it together you want it to be kind of dough like almost so you don't want to add too much water but it will keep the dust down so if you have one of those spray bottles that might be the best thing for you now it is going to stick a little bit to your hands but not forever it's just paper and plaster um, I have not had too many people have a hard time with plaster before. If you do notice that your hands are getting itchy or anything, then you might want to see if you can find a pair of gloves, um, like plastic gloves. But I hope you notice in this video, I really did not add a ton of water. And I'm just going to smush it around to make sure that all of that paper pulp is getting wet and mushy. And it's very moldable and it kind of reminds me of tuna fish a little bit um, but it is kind of moldable you can push it around it is not going to dry fast on you okay so you want it to form like a little little ball you know you want it to form its shape and be all connected okay so once I have that it's kind of ready to go so I have here a plastic bag, it's just a Hannaford bag, and this is what I'm going to work on top of. It'll help clean, keep, you know, my table clean and I can easily, you know, pick it up and move it somewhere else if I need to. Um, if you are not working directly on your board, which is how I would prefer it to be, you could even stick your board inside the bag. That way you have a solid surface so that you want to pick it up and move it somewhere else after you can. So like if you're working at your kitchen table or something, you can move it somewhere else safe after. Okay, so I'm going to work on top of it like this. The other thing that this does for you is it helps you see where my person would be in relation to the, the page that you're going to be working on. Um, I just washed my hands and speaking of which, um, this stuff does come off very easily 
with a little bit of water, but I would try to prevent putting too much of this stuff down your sink. So, um, you know, if you have some paper towels uh, around, I would just like dip your hand in water and then try to wipe off as much as you can with a paper towel. Um, if you have, I mean, it's kind of cold to be washing your hands outside, but you could take a little bucket of warm water, bring it outside and wash it over um, the earth. And that might be a little bit better than going down your sink in your septic tank. But anyway, so I have this, I was just doing that myself and I have this paper towel and it was all wet and I figured, you know what, this is a good place to start. So, um, when I'm building a little figure, anything with this stuff, I don't want it to be solid. I want it to be um, somewhat hollow underneath. So you can use kind of anything, or at least not, this might not be hollow because this will kind of stick to it, but I don't want to build, I don't want to just take this whole thing and be this whole thing be my head um, because that way uh, it's going to take a really long time to dry, okay? So I could kind of play around it and flatten it a little bit and that might be the best way to kind of start if I build up a little place there and then I take my piece and I just kind of flatten it. Um, the cool thing about this substance is there's a few cool, cool things. One is that you can always add on to it later, whether it's wet or dry, okay? Um, you can, if you let it all dry, if it dries like too much, for you and you were like oh shoot I wanted to take this part out you can actually kind of carve it out with some carving tools um, so you can work on it when it's dry and when it's wet okay so just like we practiced our drawings you're going to kind of practice your face and the facial proportions so I might play around with this a little bit at first and go okay it's my person where's my person gonna be what am I going to be doing? I think I'm going to have mine holding pottery, so I might actually have her or me <laughs> um, up a little higher. So I might just see how that looks, you know, where I'm going to be. I actually kept envisioning her on this side, so I'll put her on this side. And then I have to look at the proportions again and go, okay, halfway. And all I'm going to do is use my fingers at first to just kind of make some indents for my eyes. And what that's going to do is that's going to bring me this little bridge part of my nose and then I can just kind of press around. You probably notice that even for me my little left side does not, my left hand does not do the same thing as my right hand so you can always go back. But I make the brow and I just pinch. Okay, and sometimes you'll have little flakes that come off and I wouldn't worry because we can always kind of fill it in later. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I want the nose to go down. So I'm gonna kind of use my fingernail a little bit or lack thereof because I really don't have big fingernails. You know, my nose is a little thinner than that, so I'll do that. So really I'm just kind of pressing around and I'm not moving it too much but I'm just gonna start playing around with the shapes and just push it where I think it can be pushed, okay? Now my hands get kind of covered, and so you might wanna go back to that little bucket of water if you did that, and you can have, if you have like a little cup of water next to you, you and like a paper towel, this would be perfect. Um, you can just kind of do that throughout. Um, you can like dip your finger in the water and you can try to smooth some things out that way because then your hand won't be sticking to the stuff, okay? Um, you can use a simple thing like your pencil. So if you really hate the feeling of this stuff, get yourself some little tools. It can be as simple as like a toothpick, a pencil, a popsicle stick, um, a straw, a fork, a spoon, you know, something in your, in your kitchen. I'm going to come down a little bit to my mouth right here, right? So you kind of draw it in there. Try to get my lip. It's kind of hard. My pencil. And you kind of just envision where it's going to be. And it's the middle of my lips. 
you know, push it around until you're happy with what it's starting to look like. Kind of do little dots too, if that helps you to kind of push things in the right spot. You know, do you want an open mouth? Or are you going to try to push that lip open? Or not? Like I'm talking because I talk all the time. Blah, blah, blah. You know, and then I need some, I got too much stuff here. I need a chin, right? But there's kind of too much going on here, so I could even have my pencil help me and if it's too much you can kind of pull some off it might be a little less but you have a lot of time to play with this okay you have a lot of time so if you have to like you know go take out the garbage or do something else for a little bit it's okay if it starts hardening up on you like I said when it's a little bit harder you can actually like <clears throat> sand it with sandpaper you can um, kind of carve it out with with different tools. You might need something harder than a popsicle stick, um, but you can do something like that, okay? Um, you know, I don't wanna forget about the eyes either, but I'm gonna first just do the nostrils because that's kind of a fun one. I can just take my pencil. Now, usually when you, if you've had this very round thing to start with, you might have to kind of indent your nose and pull some of that material up to be the tip of your nose and it might take a second but if you know your goal you can do it you know and I might have to sand it down a little bit or something after you know but you can start with a generic face if you have any very defining features then you might want to make sure you get them right away. Um, but you can kind of start with a generic face. Usually there's an indent between our eyes, our eyebrows, right there. So I can do that. A couple paint brushes. If you have something with a stiff brush, I think it's gonna work, but let's try this one first. If I wanted to smooth that out. Yeah, I think even the, the floppy brush will work a little bit. It's a little harder because it is so floppy. Um, if I have this, that's definitely gonna work. So if you have a little paint brush of some sort so you can get a little bit smoother of a texture, there's gotta be yellow of some sort on my paintbrush but you can get a little bit thinner I mean sorry smoother of a design you can each, actually I was able to just use the paintbrush to move it around which is kind of cool so play around with like whatever you have available to you to try to do it You can do what a lot of old time marble sculptors do and they actually just stick that pupil in. It will kind of help you to place your irises when you paint this. Um, but you can kind of start working from here. And if this was all I was able to do in one day, that's perfectly fine. You can leave it and I'm going to leave mine for today and see, let it dry. I can leave it right out. It's you know starting to lose a little moisture down here but because it's you know got the paper towel underneath it will help it to dry underneath as well but um you know you could ruin it and smush it but um 
I would keep working on it. You guys only have this bag to work with. So I only used about a third of the bag so far and I got the face and that's gonna be the bulk of your piece. Um, you can always use you know, newspaper or paper towels to create the body first so you can create um, that you know the bulk of it so you have more to work with um, just make sure you kind of use use your judgment a little bit on um, how much you mix up at a time because you don't want to waste any of it if you should run out of clay crete you don't have any more and you need more just let us know because we we will have more here at the school for you um, but i i'm hoping that you only have to pick up supplies uh, once uh, but we might be able to coordinate it uh, you're gonna need paint at some point to paint this this person so we uh, are working on a way to get you guys little bits of paint for the remote students um, if you have your own paints either acrylic or tempera or even potentially watercolor at home then you will be all set and you can use what you have at home so you'll have to let us know um, I hope that helps. It's really a very simple material to use. It's very versatile um, and it should be a lot of fun. If you have any extra, you can have fun and make some Christmas ornaments or something. Uh, all right. Thanks for watching.